Sometimes, conventional camera traps can't capture all the data that scientists need. So this is... Right. We're DAM4, this is ABR15. Right. Like Craig, biologist Liana Zanette and Mike Clinchy are spying on animals in South Africa. But their camera traps are very different. Those plain hoopoos. This camera setup plays back sounds of predators in order to trigger a fear response. So lions at 11.42 on the 23rd of July. That's the terrible noise. There we are. When the animal walks by, the system will activate the speaker. It'll get that 10 seconds of sound so we can see what the animal was doing just before it heard the sound, what it does when it's hearing the sound, and also what it does after the sound stops. This may sound like a mean practical joke, but Liana and Mike are trying to understand the role that fear plays in an ecosystem. What happens when animals aren't killed, but just scared? We're basically counting fear. So we're figuring out the degree to which fear affects everything. Their work addresses a serious problem in ecosystems all over the world. The dwindling number of scary, but natural, predators. Wherever large carnivores have been exterminated, there's often massive ecosystem problems. The prey have nothing to fear. And because they have nothing to fear, they can overgraze everything down to the ground. That's happened repeatedly all over the world. It continues to happen. And it's a real ecological problem. Decades ago, Yellowstone National Park faced a crisis. With the native gray wolf locally extinct, the elk population exploded gorging on plants and decimating the landscape. In 1995, the Park Service reintroduced the gray wolf to Yellowstone, and the elk population dropped. Soon, parts of the ecosystem began to change. Vegetation flourished. Willow trees thrived, helping to stabilize the once eroding riverbanks. Scavengers, such as fox, black bear, and even birds, benefited from the elk carcasses left by wolves. Exactly how the wolves changed Yellowstone's landscape is still being debated. But Liana and Mike say it's not just about the number of kills that predators make. It's how many prey they scare. Predators will kill way fewer prey than they scare. Predators scare all of their prey. They kill a few of them. To better understand how fear affects animals, Liana and Mike have spent days setting up dozens of cameras that record video and play sounds from three different predators here. Lions, cheetahs, and wild dogs. The cameras give us the ability to do a manipulation of this sort, uh, which is very difficult. I mean, working out here is very difficult, right? These animals, we don't know where they're going to be. They're not radio tagged or anything like that. I don't want to be out here at night when all the lions and the cheetahs and the leopards are out. Thankfully, we have the cameras that can be out here. A week later, they return. Laptop. Okay, just double check. Looking through hours of footage, Liana and Mike analyze fear responses to the three predators. This is, ooh. Ooh, getting like the wild dogs. <laughs> Cheetahs startle some animals, but not others. Wild dogs are scary. Unless you're a rhino. And lions make just about everybody run for the hills. Camera 13. Camera 13. The next phase will be to see how fear affects these animals' reproduction rates and feeding times. Liana and Mike have conducted similar studies elsewhere in the world, and the results are startling. 
what we've discovered over the years is that this has massive repercussions on a long time scale in terms of the number of offspring that animals are able to produce. In British Columbia, sparrows subjected to the sounds of a hawk produced 40% fewer offspring. Raccoons frightened by hearing large carnivores spent 66% less time feeding, leaving more crabs and fish in the oceans. And when cougars heard the sound of their predator, humans, their feeding times went down by half. Just because they think that there's predators around, there's fewer offspring that are produced. The predators aren't killing the offspring, it's just thinking that there's predators around that is causing this massive reduction in population. Their research is sounding an alarm to conservationists. Big, scary predators affect landscapes in ways that aren't always obvious. Failing to protect them could cause entire ecosystems to collapse. By incorporating fear into the equation, we have a much better understanding of management plans that, that may work, management plans that will not work. It's just the beginning of a whole new understanding of how the fear of predators can shape everything. It's unbelievable.